Big Green Sports fans, and welcome to Big Green Sports Classic Women's Soccer Edition. I'm Brett Franklin. Great to have you along, and we're glad you can join us in a very unusual 2020 fall season. But we're trying to give you a little bit of normalcy by playing some of the best games in uh, Dartmouth College sports here recently. And of course, we're looking at women's soccer today. And we have a couple of guests that are going to be joining us uh, today. And we'll first introduce the uh, head coach of Dartmouth College women's soccer. Ron Rainey is with us. Ron, good to talk to you. Yeah, Brett, thanks for, thanks for having us. Um, ben, thanks for putting this together. And, it, and it's great seeing Mariel, Brittany, and um, Bianca right now. Ready for a good game. Ready for a good game. And of, as you mentioned, Coach, we have uh, two alums and a current player. We'll introduce our, our alumni here, uh, a forward from Calgary, Alberta. She uh, started 13 of 17 games for the Big Green in the 2017 season. Bianca Ribby joining us here on Big Green Classics. Bianca, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Also with us, another alum, a midfielder from Suffield, Connecticut. She was first team all Ivy in 2017, started every game for the Big Green. Brittany Champagne joining us. Brittany, good to see you. Hi, nice seeing you guys. And a current member of the Big Green squad. She was a freshman in 2017, and uh, now she is the veteran of the uh, Big Green women's soccer team. It's goalkeeper Mariel Gordon from Dallas, Texas. Good to see you, Mariel. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Well, today's game is uh, one we're going to go back to 2017, just the second game of that season in a very good non-conference slate for the Big Green uh, that season as the Stony Brook Seawolves uh, came to Burnham Field. Today's Big Green Sports Classic game is being brought to you by Ledyard National Bank, the official banking partner of Dartmouth Athletics. Visit ledyardbank.com or visit a branch to check out Ledyard's Dartmouth Athletics branded debit cards. Ledyard National Bank, plan well, live well, play well. The non-conference play in that 2017 uh, season, you guys really came out of the shoot very well, and uh, this was a good matchup early on for your squad. It was a good matchup. I think that year Stony Brook ended up going to the NCAA tournament, and um, this was the Sunday game of a Friday-Sunday weekend that a lot of people, um, as, as youth players coming up, that you, know, you play two, three, four games sometimes in a weekend, um, but, but it, it kind of, it, it's, it's a tough transition for college players that, that first weekend you go Friday, Sunday, um, especially with some of the teams that had had maybe two more weeks of practice than we did. So, um, that's always one of the things that you think about, but we had a great showing, um, in this game. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Stony Brook, I believe, had uh, three games already underneath their belt by coming into this one, and of course, your second uh, game here. So, uh, again, it was a beautiful day. Again, second game uh, of that uh, season. So, uh, let's get right into it. Stony Brook and Dartmouth from uh, August 27th, 2017, uh, from beautiful Burnham Field. So, we'll uh, get things rolling right now. Back to back shutouts with wins against Iona. And leading up to uh, this season, Ron, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, the energy coming into this season. Uh, of course, um, you know, some new faces also, uh, you know, some old faces as well. But talk to us a little bit about the energy coming in uh, to that game and into that uh, non-conference 2017 play. You know, this, um, this year um, we uh, – I think we started a lot of uh, – we had a we had some um, older players, but then we started a lot of youth. So I, and, you know, and there, there's Mariel serving a ball away. So I think at the time, maybe there were five um, five freshmen on the field, and I think that this was a year that we fooled around with a three-five-two a little bit, um, which was a little bit of a different formation. Uh, for us, if I remember correctly, right now that we'll we'll be able to see that um, as we go along here. But as always, I've always thought that the, every Dartmouth team I've had here, people come in uh, relatively fit, and then even though we have a short preseason, everybody wants to start playing games, and so that's that that is um while we while we had to probably work on a lot of stuff, it was good to just play another opponent. Um, so, so that was, um, that was fun. Uh, we'll start well, with, uh, I remember, two. sorry yeah, to cut you off. I, I just, I remember, uh, this season was a little bit different because we had just raised the physical testing standard. Um, so, you know, back then we were doing the 300 yard shuttles 
And uh, up until yeah, up until that point, our standard was oh, you have to run uh, the three three shuttles, and then it was this was the first season that we did the four um, shuttles. So I feel like I felt like I was at my personal best uh, physically leading into this season, which uh, I think made these preseason games a lot easier. Uh, Brittany, uh, maybe you can comment, uh, you know, going into your senior season and just kind of the energy and what you were feeling going into that 2017 campaign. Yeah, I think actually uh, I kind of agree with what Bianca was saying. As far as our uh, fitness went, we didn't have a cutoff when it came to like how many shuttles we were doing. So it really added this competitive edge to the, the dynamic. You know, the team was really pushing each other to kind of outdo each other. We weren't just aiming to get three shuttles done. We were aiming to do up like the most you could possibly do. And it really started – to get each other motivated and get ready for the season and like put it all out there right from the beginning. Now, Mariel, you were in an interesting situation. You were going into your freshman season, which is a big challenge in itself, just getting used to college and, and that whole lifestyle. But you were thrown right into the fire, uh, your second start here uh, in this contest against Stony Brook. Walk us what it was like, not only just being a freshman new on campus at Dartmouth, but being thrown right into the starting role in that 2017 season. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny to think about it. It feels like so long ago, um, but it's literally three years ago. I don't even remember the outcome of this game actually, <laughs> um, but no, I remember being excited. I mean, nervous in a good way, um, but I think we had really good team camaraderie and I had good support from um, the upperclassmen, I think, and I, I never felt out of place, I don't think, and was just excited for the opportunity. Maybe each of you can kind of comment on, and we'll start with you, Ron, how important it is to get that team camaraderie early in the preseason and even when you're into non-conference. I mean, you know, you can throw out play, the greatest players out there, but if you don't have that team chemistry, I imagine it's just a season won't go well. So how important is it to develop that camaraderie, that team chemistry that Mariel just talked about in those early weeks of the season? Oh, it's huge. You know, and, and uh, again, you, you just want – you, you want um, you want your older players to to have the younger ones feel comfortable. Um, you, you 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 want your older players to challenge the, the younger ones, and that was a freshman that just took that shot, Lorna McFarland. Um, and and so it, you know having those things, I thought this this team did a really good job because. Um, the younger ones needed older players to look up to um, um, when they were out playing. And, and again, our leadership uh, this year was when Bianca and Gia were our captains. I mean, Brittany, um, you know, who had been on the field for four years, uh, Remy Berinsky, who was out there, um, did a real nice job. I, I, I think it's essential. Now, you know, during the preseason, the practices are the practices. They're competitive. They're fun. A lot of times what really helps a team gel is some of the things that go on off the field or in the in 53 commons or at a meal or, you know, just, just um, telling people what classes they should um, look at or if they have some teachers that they've had before. Those type of things start um, get teams to, to be a little bit closer for sure. I'll ask our players, you know, how important is it, you know, even when you're coming in as a freshman, you know, to come, maybe you get a little bit of a head start, right? You know, you get into school a little bit early, you're kind of getting to know that campus routine and where everything is located. But just from a player aspect, uh, Bianca, you could start with you, you know, you know, as a player, how important is it to kind of find yourself in that first few weeks and to get comfortable as a freshman, I imagine that helps when you're playing a, a, you know, a fall sport, you get there a little bit early, you're able to kind of blend in a little bit easier. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a huge advantage that, uh, you know, soccer has and all the other fall sports have um, that we, yeah, we get like a couple solid weeks before anybody else is on campus. It gives us, you know, a great bonding time just with our teammates, just cause it's all, all just uh, soccer and fall sports. So we really get to work on that cohesion. Um, but as well as, yeah, just figuring out like the, the lay of the land and kind of getting into a routine, you know, you're kind of, you're uh, thrown in there, you're away from home. And, you know, for someone like me, I'm not even in the same country. So uh, I found it, I found it just uh, so crucial to make those, uh, those bonds that really carry you for the, the full four years. And they definitely, uh, you know, they become really strong in preseason. Brittany, uh, as Ron mentioned, you were someone who saw the field uh, early and, and often. Talk to us about your development going into your freshman year and, and how 
getting that team cohesion and, and for yourself finding your comfortability going into that first year. How important was that for you? The first year was nerve wracking to say the least. <laughs> I remember uh, very, very clearly, but um, I even remember back to our first away game. We went out to uh, Seattle and we were out in Washington and it was really stressful kind of being out with an older back line. I played out on the, on the left side and I had a lot of older players next to me that had been working together for a while and I didn't obviously didn't want to let them down. So it kind of took a lot to get comfortable kind of having a voice on the field and like feeling like I belonged. It took a little bit of time, but I worked with some people that were always willing to kind of like pump me up, kind of get in my head, tell me when I was doing things good. And if I was did something wrong, they had, they were constructive about it. It wasn't negative. And I really appreciated that being really young out there and, you know, timid to be, to say the least. Now, Mariel, as a goalkeeper, you, you can't be timid when you're out there because you got to be calling every, you know, you got to be calling out traffic. You got to be vocal out there. So was that, difficult or easy for you to kind of find your voice, so to speak, when you're out there as, as a freshman, uh, you know, for the first time? Yeah, I think it was definitely a challenge to find a balance between like being a freshman, not stepping on any toes, like playing my role, but also, yeah, being a commanding voice on the field that people need to rely on. Um, so yeah, I remember I wrestled with that a little bit, probably into my sophomore year as well of just figuring out how important my voice on it, my voice is on the field. I'd now, love as to we, really commend yeah. Mariel on that, too, just, you know, having her as a freshman in the back as a goalkeeper. She did such a good job having a voice and being vocal. And I know it takes time, but I was actually really impressed by how fast she was able to kind of step up and kind of direct us. And, you know, we weren't going to – whatever she said, it wasn't going to be personal. We weren't going to take it off the field, you know. And I feel like she got comfortable with that, knowing that, like, she could say, you know, what she had to say and be comfortable with it and that it wasn't going to be, like, judged or, you know, misconstrued. What do you think for our players? What do you think is the biggest difference going to Division One college soccer? Um, is it the speed of the game? Is it, you know, just the whole lifestyle? You know, you're on your own for the first time. Can you guys comment as to what you thought was the biggest jump to Division One soccer, in your personal opinion? Mary, we can um, start with you. Or yeah, whoever. sure. Um, for me, just off the top of my head, is kind of the importance of every single game um, coming from club where you play 50, 60 games a year to now playing 17 that mean everything. Um, yeah, it's definitely just creates the next level of intensity. Um, and then, yeah, along with speed of play and things like that. But I think that just the sheer number of games. Yeah, I think um, part of it, too, was a little difficult, especially being in the Ivy League. Uh, was the fact that we weren't allowed to have, you know, in the off season we were only allowed a certain amount of hours and other division schools could practice more per se. And we had to like have a little bit more time focused on academics. So we were competing with schools that had, you know, more practices together under their belt. And we had to kind of deal with that and the classes that we were taking in a shorter period of time. So it was a little more condensed. So that was a little bit of a struggle um, just to balance the academics and the athletics of the division one and Ivy league institution. Yeah, I really felt like it was just like such a submersive experience where, <clears throat> you know, it really is like being a like complete person in the sense where, you know, we are like soccer players and we are like teammates and we come together as a team, but it's, it's like you, yeah, you just like see your teammates on campus, you're in classes with them. You really just, uh, you just get to know your teammates like on a personal level. And I think that that like leaks into uh, the on the field play. And it, I think it makes you a better team to like uh, go through life with these people. Um, so yeah, I think it's just, uh, it was so different in high school. And uh, you know, growing up, you see them for like two hours a day and that's it. But yeah, you see these people everywhere. <laughs> Of course, we're seeing some good pressure right now uh, here from the Big Green offense as we're watching uh, Big Green Classics from uh, 2017, Stony Brook and Dartmouth. Uh, Ron, uh, as the head coach and as we've heard from some of your players, uh, what do you talk to as far as recruits and as far as, you know, players who are looking to make that Division One level uh, jump? You know, what is the biggest thing that you think players think they know, but maybe they're, you know, it's a little bit of a rude awakening? Uh, def definitely the speed of play. I, I think that um, I think that it's it, it's something that they don't realize. It, but they they do after the first practice. We're not even talking about the first game. They do after the first practice, and um, and and just you know what we try to say to to club and high school players coming in 
is if you're taking three touches at a club practice to get ready for a college, take one, you know, or if you, you know, if, if you feel like, if you feel like you're in really good shape, um, you might want to add about 15 to 20 minutes onto that workout and, and those type of things. But I think it's the speed of play and, and then also just the, um, the 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 speed of the speed of thought of the players uh, when they're moving the ball around and again in this game you see we, we've had some good moments at that one lead up there um Lorna ran through their defense took a shot and then Remy hit, hits a great shot from out the outside the box that led to a corner but then within a minute you know Stony Brook has some good possession and they're able to get down at the other end but I think just that that transition um, is is a lot of quicker than I think um, um, people players realize, um, and again, it's something that they have to. We try to replicate it in practice um, right from the get go. But that's that's what um, that's what first year players usually tell us as coaches um, when they've gone through about a week of practice. When, uh, when I'm watching this video, I just look at the beautiful surface that is uh, Burnham Field. And uh, I would uh, like to know, you know, just as far as where Burnham Field ranks as some of the nicest fields that you guys played. I, I've talked to a lot of folks uh, who have come up here and they say this is one of the nicest natural surfaces in uh, northern New England. Uh, Ron, uh, just you got to be lucky to have a, a great uh, facility just like Burnham Field. There's not too many uh, places that have a spot like this. Yeah, and and I I defer to the players to let them talk about it. Um, but it's it's um it's for sure it's for sure one of the best fields that um that I've ever seen. And I and I think that um, you know one of the one of the things that COVID didn't hurt were our grass fields. Right now, Burnham, uh, Chase Four, and Blackman fields. I mean, they're as good as I've ever seen them. Um, maybe not having a summer of camps on them or anything like that, but. It, it 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 makes you it like when you're walking across that grass for a game you just feel lucky um, because again soccer is still a game that the you want to be on a grass surface that's the best surface to be on when it's a great surface and I don't think we've ever had a year where we don't feel um, that we're going to be playing on one of the best surfaces in the country. Bianca, where does uh, Burnham rank uh, as far as uh, your favorite fields? Uh, I think it's definitely one of the best fields that I played on in the entire four years that I was at Dartmouth. Um, just like, you know, not only like the surface just being like, I mean, yeah, impeccable, but you really give it up to uh, just like the whole, the whole crew who works so hard to uh, keep these fields in such great shape. We're definitely appreciative of them, but yeah, just like the smoothness, even the texture of the grass. It's just, uh, it's very good. I mean, it makes for amazing soccer. It's uh, yeah. You can predict where the ball goes and uh yeah, just leave it all out there. Bianca, Bianca's from Canada. It's their their ground is always frozen too. So that that's <laughs> oh, we have terrible grass. I mean, Burnham's <laughs> the best field that I've ever played on. Um, I didn't I didn't know good fields until I uh, went to Dartmouth. <laughs> yeah, uh, say, yeah. New Hampshire really changed grass fields for me. Going into college, I remember turf was my like my primary. Like I loved it in high school. We had a beautiful turf field. Once I got to New Hampshire and I saw this grass, I'm not kidding you. I, I, I never wanted to play back on that turf again. Like the grass is just so smooth. They take such good care of it. And not to give up too many of our secrets, but I do remember a time in uh, freshman year, we went down to Princeton and uh, we brought a little bit of our Burnham grass seed. And we said, we're bringing, this is Burnham. This is our home field. And we put a little bit of that. Thanks to some good coaching over here. <laughs> All Ron's idea. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I can't imagine there's too many natural grass surfaces out in uh, Texas, but uh, maybe you can speak to uh, your experience at Burnham Field. No, actually, I grew up playing on some really, really nice fields. I came from FC Dallas and uh, Toyota Soccer Center, if anyone has ever been to uh, – showcase there but they have very very nice grass field so honestly yeah ranks close up to Burnham but Burnham has that special atmosphere all the meaning and so yeah definitely the, the best field out there but I did I was very fortunate in club uh, that, that that facility that Mariel's talking about is is beautiful where the um where the MLS team yeah plays. It, it's awesome now what time did you have to practice Mariel in the summertime where so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be just hot on those fields. Yeah, you gotta wake up at seven a.m. and get it before the sun's up. And 
be out there when the sun goes down and you don't want to be if you especially if you're on a turf field you do not want to be out there in the middle of the day <laughs> Yeah. Now, Bianca, you're, we mentioned uh, you're originally from uh, Canada. Now, had you had spent much time in the States prior to uh, your experience here at Dartmouth? Yeah, um, I mean, just personally with my family, I'd done a lot of traveling when I was younger. But then also, uh, I was on, yeah, I was on a very competitive uh, club team growing up. And we did a ton of showcases in the U.S. Um, and a lot of tournaments. So, yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I went to Dallas and I, uh, I had a showcase there. I don't, I don't remember exactly where we played. I was a little bit younger. But, uh, yeah, spent a lot of time in the U.S. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, as long as we're talking about fields, Burnham's still the best that I was on. <laughs> and, and Ron, uh, you know, uh, have you, uh, you know, recruiting international players, is that, uh, you know, easier said than done? Is there a lot, little bit more hoops through that? Or, uh, you know, how, how is that international scene? Or is it the same as if we're talking with Canada, the United States? Where, where does that kind of flow together? Um, it, it, it depends. It depends on the country. I, I mean, Bianca, um, and, and in Canada, the school system is, is actually really, really good. And, and so with, um, with Canada and U.S., there's, there's probably a good um, comparison from a school standpoint. When you start getting maybe some European countries and some different areas um, where maybe English isn't the first language, it's definitely a little bit harder. Um, um, as far as the testing and the grades you need to get in. But, I mean, I think it's something that I think all the players that we've had that have been from, um, that have been internationals have added something to our team and added something to the school um, a, as well. And so I always, I hope that we always have, you know, um, two to three or four. Um, I don't think we'll ever have nine or ten or anything like that. But if we have two or three or four, I think it, it's a great thing for our program and, and, and the culture of our team. Let's talk about the first time you, each of you came to campus and what that first experience was like. Had, had any of you ever been to New Hampshire prior to a visit to Dartmouth? Amira, we'll start with you being from, from Texas. What was your initial uh, thought? Hopefully, Ron had you come up here in the spring, not during the winter, you know, when it's all snowy. But, uh, but what was that first impression like of, uh, of Hanover and the Dartmouth campus? Yeah, so being from the South, I had actually never heard of Dartmouth um, until – Ron reached out after showcase um, and then I remember I visited I think it was like a week nine or ten of winter so it was winter term but there, I don't remember there being snow so it's a pretty like whenever there's not snow it's almost grosser than when it is so um, I think I got the front end of it but I remember loving it just really feeling the, the campus um, like the culture of the campus and all it had to offer and I yeah definitely got that gut feeling once once getting to Dartmouth. Brittany, a kind of sort of a short jaunt right up I-91, but what was that first uh, view of uh, campus like for you? I actually remember the first day I came and visited for a showcase. Uh, I had taken the SAT that morning, <laughs> so I wasn't in the best mindset, but surprisingly, <laughs> Dartmouth really turned it around for me. Um, it's funny, though. I definitely, I remember touring a few schools, and uh, anytime I went south and I drove through New York City, it really took a toll. Hours and hours added up, and I, I decided, I was like, no, nah, I have to go north. I'm not driving through the city anytime. <laughs> and shout out to my parents. I didn't want to make them have to drive all of these extra hours if they were going to see all my games, because I know they're dedicated, and they were going to go regardless. <laughs> Bianca, your first uh, view of uh, Dartmouth campus. Yeah, my first view was uh, coming up for an official visit. It was the November of my uh, senior year in high school. And I mean, I was just struck by the beauty. Uh, I live right next to the Canadian Rockies. So, um, you know, I do see a lot of beautiful scenery, but coming up to Dartmouth, it was just to see these amazing trees and all this green. Um, it was, it was quite spectacular uh, just from that standpoint. And uh, I mean, the people at Dartmouth are absolutely amazing. And I don't know what it's like at like other schools, but um, you'd be hard hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't love this school and uh yeah doesn't say that they uh that they don't bleed green so uh just the yeah just the love for the school you you know you're going to a good place when you know whether you're talking to an athlete or just a student and they've got like nothing but amazing things to say 
Here's an opportunity right here. And we actually had two freshman goaltenders uh, in this uh, contest, if I uh, remember correctly here. So uh, very interesting dynamic there. Maybe, Ron, you can tell us when you decided to take over this program, I got to imagine you came up here, had a, had a visit, and uh, what were some of the things that uh, you were sold on? Well, and, and I, I grew up on the East Coast in Delaware, but I had never been to New Hampshire. Probably uh, the farthest north was probably Boston, which, uh, again, like some people think Boston to – Hanover is is 19 hours and it's not it's two hours but um but the farthest north I think was was Boston so my first time in New Hampshire was on the um was on my um my interview visit and uh, again it, it's it's not hard when you get on campus and and you talk to some of the folks and 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 things like that to know that Dartmouth is a special place and um you know facilities and those type of things um are are easy cells i mean people you know coming from a big 10 school dartmouth facilities wise has has what all those power five schools has um and and we're lucky we have some land but they then they they've done some great stuff with the land I, um from a soccer standpoint having um having a men's program was a little bit of a draw the the previous 16 years i had been at places where it was just women's soccer. So that I thought that was good to have a kind of a buddy team um, and a brother kind of sister team, which um, I, I think is pretty cool. But it was it was mostly the people. And um, at the time, um, we have three children who are now getting a, a little bit older. But my wife and I said, we're in a window where um, if we're going to take on another challenge, let's do it before they get to high school age. And so we came out here and they were in fourth grade and fourth and seventh and eighth. Um, and so, um, and, and the time has gone really, we've been lucky because Iowa was a nice place as they were younger kids and, and New Hampshire has been an awesome place as, as they've gotten a little bit older, but, um, but I do, I think the people you meet, it, 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 it really, it really just sells itself. Now, going back to the uh, 2017 uh, season, after this Stony Brook game, you guys uh, went out and uh, had a nice uh, West Coast trip, uh, some competitive action out there with Long Beach State uh, and Pepperdine. But uh, I, I imagine that West Coast uh, trip had to be a lot of fun to uh, get out there and play some quality teams. And to get out of the West Coast, that's not a bad deal, Ron. It was. I the, the, the players probably remember we didn't do a charter bus on that trip. And remember how many times we got caught up in, in Los Angeles traffic um, where it was almost, I, I mean, I think Waze had just come out as a, and so Waze would, um, would keep trying to take us through areas to get us someplace a little bit quicker. And we played well against Long Beach, who was a good team, but shoot, for a little while, I didn't even think we were going to get to the game, to be honest. Um, so... There's still there's still some tolls that might have been left unpaid. You know, we we got into the we got into the bus lane out there just to um, try to cover some ground. But um, it it was it was it was a I think a great um, um, visit. Now Aaron, who's out here, is from LA. I do also remember it was really hot, way hotter than it ever um, was. And if you got if you all remember that when we were at Pepperdine how hot the locker room was that they put us in. Um, but, but usually it's not, a, it's not in the nineties and it was really, really hot. But um, I mean, th that trip is all, th those trips that we take are always fun things to do for the team to get to a different area um, and, and have that. So um, that, that, that was fun going out there after this, after this, um, after this, um, tri after this weekend of games. Yeah, I remember that yeah. specifically. I was going to say, not to make excuses or anything, but since, you know, California is a little bit warmer than uh, New Hampshire, they already had a little bit of an advantage, never mind that the heat wave they were going through resulted in, you could see the wildfires from our hotel at night. You would see the, the like, the fires burning through the window, and you just hoped, hopefully, come morning, it didn't make it all the way over to us. But uh, it was definitely really hot. And I also really remember we had some great alumni experiences there, too. We had visited one of the alums um, out in, what was that, right in, near L.A. there? I remember the specific. Yeah, with Tracy, um, yeah, Tracy. Sorry, who played um, who played um, lacrosse and and women's soccer, and 
and is now on the dab board. She's awesome. Like she's she has she's some crazy awards from her times at Dartmouth, I remember, and a gorgeous house to match. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, what is it like getting 20, 25 people, maybe a little bit more, all on a plane? Like, like maybe you guys could talk to us, like, you know, what it's like, you know, because, you know, some of our folks watching, yeah, they played in high school, you get on a bus, you go bada bing, bada boom, but imagine it's a little bit more, you know, everyone's got to have their ID, everyone's got to make sure you have all the, you know, is it, a, it must be a whole process when you're, especially for a big trip out west. I almost feel like it's trying to like hurt a bunch of little kids. I feel like we're all just like so excited to uh, to get on a plane and it's just like, you know, we're all like sitting in our seats and we're turned around and you're talking to the people behind you. And it's, uh, I mean, those trips were always my, uh, my favorite part of the season, just to like go out, like see somewhere new, be with your team, traveling, um, yeah, playing different competitions. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely a big ordeal just to, like, get everybody together, make sure, you know, everyone has everything, everyone's got their passports. Um, but, I mean, it was smooth. We're, you know, we're all adults. We're just kids on the inside. <laughs> any, uh, was there any uh, bad movies, plenty of bad movies shown on uh, those, those long road trips or what? <laughs> I think we watched this horror movie one time, and that was that was about it. But... <laughs> I don't know who picked that one. <laughs> Which one? The 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 uh, and, of and the I corn. Think coming Children up of the right corn, now. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, coming up right now, Aaron gets fouled right here, I think. Yeah, so this is uh yeah, right in the box. And uh first big opportunity right here, and I believe uh this is uh Remy Berinsky that uh has the shot right here. Yeah, and their their coach, Brendan Flaherty, he he was at um he was at Yale last year. Um he wasn't happy about the call. That was the right call. That was the right call. Aaron Aaron cut that player and, and the kid just the kid just ripped her down. So maybe you can kind of break down this this play for us here, Ron, as uh Remy has a look here. Uh, again, going up against another uh, freshman goalie here. You could talk to us about our approach. I th one, I think we we didn't get we didn't have many many penalty kicks as a team. So the second game of the year already got a PK, so we were pretty happy. Uh, Remy buried all these. So, like when we, all, I always think that if you can go and Mario can speak to this, if you can go um, four to eight feet and hit it hard to a corner, it's almost impossible on the stop. What do you think, Mario? Yeah, definitely. And Remy was notorious for making almost all of them, I think. I don't think I watched her miss a PK. So. I don't think she missed a PK. And she hit, she hit him hard like that every yeah. time. I don't think anybody was ever close. And it's more of a confidence, too. Like, she was very sure of herself. She goes up and she knows she's going to put it away. You know, that's the biggest thing. It's a very mental, you know, aspect of the game is penalty kicks. And she didn't waver one second. Would you say, Brittany, she, uh, Remy had the most confidence on that roster, or do you think there were some other players, you know, maybe not cockiness, but, you know, that like, yeah, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to I'm gonna make it happen. That's funny. I actually, there weren't too, I wouldn't say there's too many that I can, like, recall that were, like, cocky or anything. I think it was more like uh, Remy especially had, a, like, a leadership mentality where yeah. she was going to lead by example, was a very strong, you know, like, demonstrator of the game, you know. And people were willing to kind of follow her example just because of her strong presence and her, like, her voice was easy to be heard just because, like, you know, she was demonstrating how well she was playing. So we're going to, you know, we're going to follow her lead. Um, even, like, she was she was yeah, younger than me, and I always looked up to her. <laughs> and I know, I know Brittany can't say this about herself, but if there's anybody who I would say has confidence, it's Brittany on the back line. She's last man back, and she's, like, deking these players out with all her fancy foot moves, and you're just, like, there, just like, oh, my goodness, I can't watch. But I can't, I can't remember a time where Britt got stripped of the ball. Like she just got such amazing footwork, and uh, yeah, she'd make the she'd make the um, offensive players look silly. I was glad I never had to go against her. I couldn't keep up with you, you and your speed up there. What are you running these days? They got you training hard up in Canada. This yeah. Olympic, this soon to be Olympic athlete. I'm hoping, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Well, uh, that's a good uh, follow-up. Uh, Bianca, Brittany, maybe you can talk to us uh, you know, what you guys are up to these days, you know, Dartmouth graduates and, and, uh, and, and what you've been up to uh, the, this in 2020, besides the social distancing, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, for me, um, so I, yeah, I graduated. I came home. I thought that I was going to be going to uh, med school right away. 
Um, but I decided that uh, I just love sports and I wasn't done competing. I felt like I was at my, uh, my best. So I uh, tried out for the Canadian bobsled team and oh, wow. I ended up making the national team my first year. Um, so yeah, I spent that first year, I was traveling over Europe. I was in all these big races, it was televised. I was competing, uh, my teammates were Olympians. I was competing against Olympians. Um, and it was an amazing experience. And, uh, yeah, so this is, I'll be going into my third season. I'm now, uh, I'm in the front seat. So I drive now and, uh, yeah, I'm still with the national program and, uh, the Olympics are coming up in 2022 and, uh, you know, I'm hoping and I, you know, I've got a pretty good shot of uh, making that happen. So definitely a huge transition from soccer. I mean, I, you know, I don't run more than 30 meters now, which thank goodness, because that was my least favorite part of soccer was the conditioning. So yeah, it's all speed and power, which uh, I mean, anybody who trained with me knows that those are always my, uh, my strengths anyways. So you into the top yeah, kind of crazy <laughs> jumper over here. I'm yeah. a broad jump in your vertical. No one could compete any of the sports out there. Yeah. Uh, and Brittany, what are you up to these days in uh, post-Dartmouth life? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm applying to be a physician assistant. So I'm applying to PA school and I'm working in uh, a hospital in Hartford, Connecticut right now. I, uh, <laughs> I started playing some more uh, pickup soccer, which I love. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this week kind of sidelined me. And I'm oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can't stay away from the injuries. But uh, now I'm going to have to sit out for more soccer, which, you know, I don't like. But, pick, up, uh, uh, pick up our division one. There's no off switch there, right, Brittany? No, the no. The code's always there, right? We had a, the luxury of we had a really good uh, even pick up around Hanover. The Hanover, we had a men's league in Hanover. And so when we were in our off seasons, we'd go over there in our sophomore summer. We'd go over and we'd play pick up with the, a lot of the guys that were home from college. Or, you know, we uh, even like one of our coaches, he'd play um, he'd play pick up with us. And he played for Wake Forest back in the days and, like, you know, we, they were some good competitive players out there. And so I had that, you know, I still wanted to keep that up. So I found a nice men's league around here. It doesn't compete to Hanover, can't compare with Hanover, but it still is pretty good, or it was until this. <laughs> Mariel, uh, what has this off season been like for you? Obviously a lot different, no doubt. But, um, you know, if we, you know, tell us what you've been doing now and how you've kind of been handling, you know, obviously you should be playing right now. And then what your normal routine would be during an off season going into a to a camp here with Dartmouth. Yeah, so I guess summer would have looked a little bit different. Um, we had training pretty hard this summer, and then come July 8th, they <laughs> they shut it all down. Um, so our off season, I guess, this summer looked a little different, and I wasn't training as hard and kind of enjoying friends and family a bit more. Um, but I think going off of the pickup thing, I'm playing that pickup right now in Hanover as my training. Um, we I'm living off campus and it's not my designated term to be in residence. So um, doing Zoom school and living um, still in Hanover, but we are yeah playing the Hanover pickup with the with the townies and it's been a lot of fun and I've actually really enjoyed it. So Ron, what what have you been doing with yourself, man? Usually you'd be full into practice plans and recruiting and all that. How how have you been able to handle these last few months? It's, I, I mean, it's definitely been different. It's, it's definitely been different. And full disclosure, Mariel is out of quarantine. So, so <laughs> just so, every, so everybody out there knows, yes. listen, she's out of quarantine. And that assistant coach who played pickup, that was before he was on staff because, um, so that was Nick Courtney who played at Wake Forest. So we don't have our coaches in the summer playing with players. <laughs> trying to get people so, in trouble here. No, I'm yeah, yeah. That so, was before. We knew um, him before. <laughs> and, and, and again, Nick, Nick is somebody, again, um, and that pickup group is still one of the great things, um, that, that we have. I mean, there's a great, there's a great, um, just a soccer, um, community up here. And so, um, so some of these things are, 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 you know, in the, in the summer, you want to find ways to play. Um, you can always go out and run and do workouts, but I mean, players want to play. So, so I think that's been one of the cool things that, um, that our players have gotten a chance to do, um, in the summer, sometimes in the winter, um, and things like that when, um, when, when we're outside some of our normal practice hours i mean you can condition all you want we can go for runs all we want we can train for the fitness test all we want but at the end of the day i know i'm fatigued unless i'm out there playing you know out on the field and 
you know, it's a whole different mentality. It's a whole different, you know, type of fitness. You got to like be immersed in the game to actually be ready for the game. That's for sure. And I imagine that that hunger is still there, you know, for you, Brittany, and for you, Bianca, even though, Bianca, you're now on to bobsledding. But I got to imagine that competitive fire is always with you with an athlete, no matter whether you're graduated or you're, you're still in the program, I would imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine not having that. I don't know. I guess just like growing up being a competitive athlete and then, yeah, playing Division I uh, sports, it's it's something that you're literally just born with and it's like uh, grown throughout your entire life. And uh, I don't, yeah, I honestly don't know how people uh, just graduate and, you know, work a desk job. I just, uh, yeah, I feel like we're just made to compete. <laughs> I, I think in one example there, the player who just challenged that ball, Gia Parker, um, and the player who she had subbed in for, um, Zoe Enright, both just did the, not the virtual Boston Marathon. They went out together. They they were supposed to run the Boston Marathon. It would have been, what, Gia's second time and Zoe's first time. Um, and when it got canceled, uh, they they still did it where if you went out for a run and you showed your, you know, you showed your course and things like that. Um, then, then they would send you the medal from the, from the marathon. But, you know, those are a couple of players. They're, they're just out of school now for, um, three, what do you, you, how many years has it been now? Are you three, two years or three years, three years, three years. For, was. How long yeah. <laughs> um, and then one year for Zoe. So that there's something that, that, um, that, that group. Um, it just that competitive aspect, still kind of trying to find that next mountain to climb, which is pretty cool. Um, Brett, you were saying what I what I'm doing. We're, we, you know, we're doing a lot of recruiting. We're and we're transferring a lot of our stuff recruiting wise to 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 go to be virtual. We're doing that a little bit. Um, you know, we 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 we've, we've been on Zooms and do those type of things. But again, this this summer. Um, I, I painted our steps that have, <laughs> I, I did some projects that, that just, we would not have gotten to, um, that if, um, if, um, if we didn't have this shutdown, I mean, but I, I think probably one of the happiest members of our family is our dog. He gets to go out for three or four walks a day. Um, because, um, just the working from home, one of the great things about, I think coaching is the relationships you um, you know, outside of your team, which you're fully invested with your team, but the day to day, you get to just walk down to offices and, and see what people are working on and just talking to coaches about what do you have going? What, what's been working, what hasn't been working? Um, and just talking through and, and supporting each other and you can do it virtually, but it's just not the same. So, so that's why G is probably running marathons right now. She just got clocked on that play right there. <laughs> <laughs> just thinks about that play, and that that's uh, that's good motivation. And they called a foul on her. That was yeah. a double champion. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> right now, as far as um, as far as you know, every team has their characters. Has you know, everyone's kind of got you know. You have the you know, you have the clown on the team. You have the serious person on the team. Is there any big personalities or you know, uh, uh, someone who was really funny on that roster that? maybe nobody would know about is there is there any personalities that you guys uh, remember from that 2017 squad here this afternoon our referee Catherine Mitchell <laughs> or any good I antidotes think, from the season I think for me coming in as a freshman Lil Raffetto is always big big character I see her outside um, on the right back position right now and yeah she she was a really really funny kid <laughs> Who would you say had the best sense of humor on that uh, 2017 team? Was there uh, a jokester? Anybody that? Uh, Haley that Soriano, she was also, uh, she was very funny and uh, very giggly. So, uh, yeah, I remember her being a big jokester. Always made me laugh. <laughs> and, and I imagine that, you know, during the competition, you know, you, you got to, you got to have a little looseness, right, Ron? I mean, you know, as much as, you know, you're in to win it, obviously, and to win an Ivy League championship, and, and we talked about team chemistry and, and team camaraderie, but, you know, it is good to have, I would imagine, some looseness there. Like you said, going out to the West Coast and having some of those, uh, you know, some of those group uh, activities, but, uh, you know, it's it's always good to 
you know, not be 100% serious all the time. You need a little bit of that break, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, and, and I think that's, that's, that's part of the fun of being on a team, what, um, what you do in those down times and, and how you make the experience uh, good for somebody you know, who, somebody else who's in the locker room with you and, and those type of things. So, and, and I, and our sport, like, like both teams here, 40 minutes battling each other scores one zero, you know? Um, and, and we've had a couple good chances. I'm not, to, I'm, I'm not seeing maybe, you know, Stony Brook has had some possession, but not many chances. So like in our sport, if you don't have, if you don't have a sense of humor, sometimes it, it'll drive you a little bit nutty because it's such a difficult sport to, to take the pressure created and turn it into goals. But I, I do, I, I do, I really do think, and, and that's part of a, a little bit of a philosophy of, of our mission, but we just really do say that you, you should be trying to make the experience better for somebody next to you. So hopefully that means smiling a lot because be, I mean, now you have some alums who are out there in the real world. It's a, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not as fun as college. It, it, it's not as fun as college. Um, you know, and so we, we want people to have a really good time when they go through their four years here. And, and speaking to our, our alums, you know, and maybe you guys can speak to that. You know, we talk about, af, you know, athletics being that classroom outside of the classroom, if that makes sense. You're, you're on the field and how that prepares you for life, working with others. How do you handle adversity? I mean, do you, Brittany and Bianca, do you find that having been a college athlete and played sports that that has prepared you for, you know, the outside world and to be ready for whatever it throws at you. Besides even just the, like the simple, you know, teamwork and, you know, being able to communicate well, we did some, um, we did a lot of team building exercises with um, Spaldo, shout out to Spaldo. Um, that really, you know, I think of, that's really changed me in my whole life. I think like a lot of the things I learned, um, he would put us through these like physically and mentally tasking activities and we'd be out in the woods for hours and we'd be over at the ski way and we'd be like pushing ourselves past what we thought we could do. And I think I grew a lot as a person with those and I take that with me like every day, you know, I, I remember one thing he used to say was don't just get through this, get something out of it. So I think that in the tough times, things are tough, but you know, what's the point of this? What am I going to like learn from this and how can I like, improve myself moving forwards and I, I live that way all the time and I think about all the different activities we did and all the torture but it made me a stronger person for it yeah um I totally agree with like Brit saying and like uh, the real world being that way and I mean obviously my situation is a little bit different because I went from essentially you know one team in one sport to now a different team in a different sport um, but I mean it's really uh, it's really interesting um, seeing athletes who you know, someone like me who came from like a division one school and played like really high level athletics versus, you know, there's a lot of other teammates who, you know, just played in Canada. And I mean, Canada, just, it's not the same as uh, being in the U.S., not the same competitive uh, level. And it, uh, I mean, it, it just shows in like uh, the type of people and the mental toughness and the skills that you, uh, you learn just like really grinding and being tested every single day. Um, I think it, uh, it's made me a better athlete. It makes me, uh, I mean, at least from what, what I feel and what I see, just uh, very mentally strong and driven and understanding what it takes to be a winner. Um, that, uh, you know, not every athlete possesses that, but I think Dartmouth really prepared me for, uh, you know, understanding the sacrifices that need to be made. I think the, like, academic part of Dartmouth really was also crucial in growing because I feel like we had to balance so much in a short period of time. Like, classes were only 10 weeks long, and you take out a week of finals and whatever else, and you're not in the classroom for too long, so it's it's really intensive, you know? So you really have to be good with – you know, your time management, you know, getting out of practice and going straight to the books. It really taught you some really good life lessons there for sure. Mariel, obviously you're still a student, but how has that life as an athlete and as a student kind of uh, grown for you as you head into your senior year this year? Yeah, like, like Britt said about the time management, I think you just keep perfecting it year after year, term after term. You you know your routine and what you need to do to get things done, um, and both on the field and in the classroom. And so, yeah, you just keep gaining that experience each, each term, I'd say. 
And Ron, you know, as a head coach, you know, coming from the Big Ten and coming more towards uh, a school and a league that is very much uh, geared towards academia, I imagine, you know, obviously as a college athlete, you got to do your schoolwork. But, you know, at an Ivy League institution, it's even that much more of an emphasis for these athletes. Oh, for sure. And, and, and I, I, th- I don't think there's anything like getting an Ivy League education. And, and I, the last couple of years, I've, I've gone and sat in on a class with our, with our players, one a quarter, so, so not all, you know, a whole quarter or anything like that. The people that are in the classroom, with there's just a lot of bright people exchanging a lot of really good ideas. And so when, when um, I, I think and, – and then the teachers are, are awesome as well. So, so you're just dealing with a combination of all those things. I mean, you have a real you, – you truly have a student – athlete experience um, as you go through four years. All right. Well, we have uh, reached the halfway point here on Big Green Sports Classics as uh, the Big Green heading into the halftime locker room, leading Stony Brook 1-0. We'll continue here with our conversation with uh, Ron Rainey, Mariel Gordon, Brittany Champagne, Bianca Ribby as a Big Green Sports Classics women's soccer continuing next. We'll be right back. Make your debit card green. Big green. Select from 16 options by visiting any Ledyard Bank location or calling 888-746-4562. Ledyard's online and mobile banking includes free personal mobile check deposit so you can show all your Dartmouth pride on your home turf. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. As a trusted choice firm, The Richards Group has been committed to local communities for decades. We take the time to get to know our clients, their needs, and budget. We're independent, so we work for you, not an insurance company. We use our expertise to find our clients the best home, auto, and business coverage at the most competitive price. Our team provides consulting services for employee benefits, retirement plans, human resources, and leadership development. The Richards Group. Prepare for tomorrow by contacting us today. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local capital is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. For a limited time at Milton Cat, get 0% for 60 months on select new Cat Compact equipment. All right, welcome back to Big Green Sports Classic Women's Soccer Edition. I'm Brett Franklin. Great to have you aboard, and we welcome you back for the second half of this matchup between Dartmouth and Stony Brook from 2017. We welcome back our uh, participants, including head coach Ron Rainey, also uh, alums Bianca Ribby, uh, Brittany Champagne, and current senior Mariel Gordon uh, joining us here uh, as we are about to kick off the uh, second half. 1-0 our score as uh, the second half, not to give it away, but gets a little bit more tight here as we go along. But uh, Ron, do you, can you think back to that halftime and going into that halftime locker room? We talked about it was a very competitive uh, first half. Uh, as you mentioned, Stony Brook was a team uh, on the rise coming in uh, to that season. But uh, talk to us a little bit about that halftime break and you know what you remember from that first half and telling your team in the locker room. Uh, I don't totally remember what we talked about, but that, that was a decent first half. So yeah, yeah. I bet you we would have talked about maybe getting a, a little bit tighter to goal. Um, uh, for some of our finishing chances. Um, I bet you we would have talked about maybe switching the point, getting it from one side of the field to the other there. Gia just tried it and hit somebody in the back. So um, so we were probably already trying to do something that maybe we had talked about. But we were I, – I feel like um, that was a, a, a pretty solid half. You know, when you, when you um, play a team like this, um, we probably also talked about – you know, them coming out if they made any adjustments. Um, and so, again, we're playing with a three back, and they they haven't really taken advantage of it getting wide or anything like that on us. Um, so I think that those were probably the things that, that we talked about. I do remember in this half, there's going to be a scene that if we see it, Mariel, you may remember this or not, but you get a ball and you put it on the ground and then you pick it up again, which is, which is, um, which would, which is usually a, a, an indirect kick. And they're, again, their coach flipped out 
<laughs> and 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 I said, "What? What happened?" And he said, "Well, she he, she rolled and then picked it up." And I was like, "Ah, maybe they allow that stuff in Texas." <laughs> um, but but the refs just totally missed it. It happened. So we'll we'll see if we can pick that up. I was looking at the stats too. We got three yellow cards in the second half. We never got yellow cards. So good for us. We shows us having a little bit of bite in this game. Um, and um, but but yeah. So. So I don't remember the exact words, but but that's what it looked like in the first. And then and then probably just talking about you try not to talk too much about outcomes, but trying to get that second goal, um, which would put them on their heels a little bit because it seemed like we had a we had enough chances to to um, try to get a second goal here. Yeah, I was going to say first half. I mean, you guys really dominated that game, especially I believe in shots. Um, as uh, well. Now, looking uh, towards some of the individual players, uh, you know, Brittany, you uh, finished out that season first team uh, all Ivy, and uh, that just was one of the many accolades that you uh, that you were able to rack up during uh, your tenure at Dartmouth. But uh, what ma- what do you think made you first team that season? Was there anything that you did differently? Was there just you know was you just it was just all connected for you? You know what what was the key to your success, especially that senior year and being named. Uh, all Ivy first team? It was actually a little bit of a tough year for me. Um, I got injured pretty early on in Ivy's, and um, I had partially tore my ACL, and I was dealing with bone bruise, and I, we were kind of – it was hard. I was kind of resting through the weeks and just playing in the games a lot. And so it was really hard because, you know, you wanted to be a part of the team dynamic and out there training with everyone. But at the same time, you know, you kind of had to rest and make sure you were ready to go for the games. So obviously that took a little bit of a mental toll, but it also gave me time to really focus on, you know, the games and like being mentally checked in when I was going to be out on the field. And I think I just like was really good with the people around us. I think everyone on the team was a really positive you know, had just a really good mindset. Even like we said, we had a lot of freshmen in the back from Mariel and even like Bonnie was a really good voice in the center back and having them around me to always kind of keep me focused and keep me, you know, going was really great to have. And Bianca, your uh, senior year, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you kind of grew into your starting role um, into this season. Can you kind of you know, talk to us your development into that senior year and, you know, and what you were expecting out of yourself going into that 2017 season. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't a starter. Um, the, the three years leading up prior, you know, I'd get into some games, I scored a few goals and that was great. But, uh, yeah, it was that my junior, it was my junior winter when, uh, you know, I was the only, only upperclassman um, or only senior uh, who was on campus and we were doing all of our winter training and uh, yeah, I, I just found myself kind of taking on uh, more of a leadership role, which I hadn't previously, um, you know, had and uh, yeah, it wasn't even something that I necessarily thought about, but uh, um So, yeah, that led into uh, getting nominated to be uh, one of the team captains leading into my senior year. And so, uh, yeah, I just remember that summer kind of uh, just lit a fire under me to, you know, I really wanted to lead by example um, in all aspects. So it just it pushed me to train harder, to work harder. And then, uh, you know, this it's special because this is actually this is uh, if I remember correctly, this is probably my breakout game. I didn't even start in this game. And I think I uh, get a couple goals in the second half here, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of uh, all my hard work kind of came to fruition. And this is what uh, I think kind of cemented my uh, starting position for the rest of my senior year. But uh, I mean, it was definitely something that was like hard fought for. I know it's hard coming in up top, even like I remember um, it's tough, you know, you for Bianca, she's she has to come in and she's got to make an impact right away. She didn't get to like, you know, warm up and be a part of that. But it was great to see that confidence, you know, on the field, especially senior year. She really grew into that. Sorry. <laughs> got another fan hanging out in, in the room. And Rob, maybe you can you can speak to Bianca's role and how that developed into 2017 as you as we just talked about her eventually getting into that starting rotation. Yeah, and and again this year we went to a three five two. So at, at times we, we would play in a four, two, three, one or a four, which looks like a four three three. So it's one less four on the field. So Bianca was somebody who always um, played a role and would come in off the bench. And and players wanna players wanna be in there, players wanna start those type of things. Um, 
and sometimes with forward, it, it's a cruel position because you can do a lot of great things. You also then have to, you have to score some goals, you know, and so you need to see some there. But again, we don't want to get, you don't want to give away the, the story here, Bianca, uh, with it being 1-0. <laughs> but, um, I, you, you know, the, the thing I always think about Bianca, I always think about the one Harry Potter movie where, where he, I, I forget the character, but when he says it's, it's easy to stand up to your enemies, um, it, it's harder when you sometimes stand up to your friends. And I think Bianca as a leader um, did some things this year that were probably very difficult um, and challenging teammates and just talking about this is who we want to be um, as a team. And that's hard. Um, that, that's hard when you're, when you're talking about your, you know, doing those things with your peers. And, and I thought that, um, maybe over 30 years, one of the best job I've ever seen, um, uh, of a captain, uh, doing that. And, 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 um, so I, I think that was one of the cool things that I'll, I'll really remember about, um, this season for sure. There's a good state by, look at the hands by Mariel right there. The hands right there by, uh, by Mariel. And, you know, and Mary, we talked a little bit about, you know, your mindset going in as a freshman, you know, in one of the most important positions, uh, you know, on the field and, and kind of going in there. You know, what was that lead up like to that season as you try and prepare? I, I know you worked with uh, goalkeeper coach Caroline Kelly, who's my old roommate. Give a shout out to CK. Um, but, uh, you know, what was that, you know, what was that lead up like? And then when Ron told you, hey, you're going to be the one, you know, what was that moment like when you, when you knew you were going to be the starter? Yeah, I think going in, you just kind of work as hard as you can in the summer. Coming from club, you always get to play, play a lot of soccer, which is a, a big pro um, coming in your freshman year. And then in preseason, I don't know if there was ever the moment of like, okay, like, here you go. Um, but I think I had a good first couple weeks of practice and, um, yeah, it was just kind of given the opportunity and then settled into it a bit. But yeah, definitely had a lot of support from from these guys and great leadership from Bianca and Gia as captains and obviously Britt. Um, I know I never had to worry about my left side. Um, I always knew you had it on lock. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, really great opportunity. It's fortunate. And Ron, you mentioned, you know, the dynamic of the team where you had that veteran leadership, but you're also incorporating uh, a younger roster as well. And like you said, it feels like, you know, in sports, you know, that can go one way or the other, you know, and where they're, you know, with some veteran players that, you know, maybe they're not getting the, the minutes that they should. But, you know, it, it seemed like in this season that, you know, you had a good cohesive unit and that, you know, it, the, the blend worked together. But usually it can go one way or the other. You've been doing this a long time and, and it seemed to, to work well in 2017 for that. I think so. I think there were some, I think there were some good personalities and I think people again, starting to, to worry just more about, um, the, the, the team first. And, um, and so I think those are things that, um, those are things that, again, I'll, I'll take away from this year. Even the, the player right there, right back, um, who was starting for us was Ellen Pattinson. And, um, and that might, this might've been maybe our first or second game started but but did a nice did a nice job and i i think there are a lot of examples um of that of people just i think just worrying about um worrying about dartmouth both on the field and off the field um which was good which was good i think you look at the the competitiveness of of this team and and i hate to bring up this stat but i mean that season you guys had six games where you lost by one goal um and there were some heartbreakers and there are a few overtime games uh, as well. I mean, this, this team had a lot of compete and a lot of fight. It just seemed like one bounce here, one bounce there. It, it, it just, it just couldn't, you just couldn't clinch it there. But I mean, the games were close. I mean, as, as we said, I mean, six, one, you know, one goal games. I mean, that, that had to be tough, but it showed you also that this team had the, the fight and the competitive competitiveness run that I'm sure you were looking for. For sure. And, and, and when you say that about overtime, that probably everybody on, on this, um, on the, the, the broadcast right now remembers a bunch, um, a, a bunch of those, and especially in the league, um, you know, where like just looking through Brown, Yale, um, Penn, three, three, one, and, and Harvard, um, three, three, um, four overtime games in league. So, uh, and, and our sport is sometimes if there's a bounce there, a, a bounce here, if you, if you take a goal lead and, and put a team back on its heels. But I, I thought the, 
the fight and grit of this team was was um was evident right right from the get go. The other thing I remember about this team again when we loaded up the midfield with five, um, um, we we at times would would be able to get through the middle third of the field um, maybe as good as any of the teams over my over the six years here, and that might have been an additional midfielder just having um as we went along in the season being able to to generate that now with three in the back sometimes you give up a couple more chances or a couple more counters but there I, who's that out there is that Gia just winning that ball so her flying kind of out of midfield and putting them under pressure were things I remember in this formation that was um um that that was different and it was fun to watch um as we went through the year I think it could have been easy for us to you know get down on ourselves with a lot of those, you know, close games and, you know, one goal losses in overtime. But um, obviously, you know, if we kept, even though we kept having them, it kind of shows that we were willing to kind of grit through and keep pushing every game. And I think that was because of the positive people we had on our team. You know, people weren't just thinking about necessarily results. They were willing to just kind of keep pushing through and not just for themselves, but for their teammates. And I think every year we've had a good mentality where it was like, you know, this is the seniors last year. Like if you can't do it for yourselves, do it for the seniors. I remember that was always a mentality. And that like was just another reason to kind of push yourselves when you were exhausted on like that past that 90 minutes or however long it ended up being. Yeah. More than 90, we were always in overtime. Past the 90, <laughs> Bianca. Past the 90. <laughs> And, you know, you, you think back to those games, uh, you know, uh, and, and really, it, like you said, Ron, you know, the, the closeness and the competitiveness of it and, and with soccer, I mean, it's like you said, it just takes one bounce here and there. I even remember, you know, the Princeton game at, at Dartmouth. I mean, that was very tightly played and it just took a bounce here or there. And it just doesn't, it goes to show you that the ebbs and flows of soccer, I mean, it can change on a dime. You can. I mean, it's, it's an amazing sport in that way. And, and, um, and, and something that, something that, you know, I, the players there, there's, there's usually that, that steadiness of, of, a, of, of a good player, of a good team, not getting too high or too low, just because of, um, just because a little bit of, of, of the sport, you know, um, and, and I think that's something that, um, that, that everybody has to deal with. And hopefully that's something that, again, after, after the playing career is over, you, you have to deal with those things, some of the ups and downs, and, and try to um, approach them the same way um, is important. But our sport, shoot, it, it, it teaches that for sure. Uh, can you guys kind of speak, especially once you get to league play, you know, you go from non-conference where, you know, one, you know, two games, maybe, a, maybe three during the week, and then you, you know, you get to, to league play and, you know, and you have all week kind of gearing up for that game. Was, was that difficult? Was that, was that easier to prepare? Uh, Mary, we'll start with you just kind of going from that where you have a lot of that non-conference action, then you're just kind of sitting for the week waiting for that one Ivy League game. Is, was that a tough adjustment for you going into your freshman year? Um, I don't think I understood kind of the importance of Ivy League games. Um, and, I mean, that's something we still talk about is, like, how much we want to emphasize the difference and we want to lessen that gap of um, Ivy League games meaning a ton more. But so I think my freshman year I was kind of blind to it. I was like, all right, like, here we go, another game next week and didn't really, like – put as much emphasis on it um so yeah i don't think that uh, anything was out of the ordinary preparation i'm sure i probably felt from the team kind of everybody on edge and a little bit more um maybe nerves um anxiety a bit just a little bit of excitement just to get to get going but yeah as a freshman i don't think i i thought too much of it not as much as i i think i would have now uh bianca Brady, yeah was is, was there any change or you know mindset when you went from non-conference to, to ivy league play you'd like to say no you'd like to say you go into every game you know that same mentality but um there is that rivalry you know you're just you're, you know all the people you've played them so many times throughout the years especially when you're a senior you get used to that and unfortunately with the ivy league we don't have a tournament so every game really means a little bit more you can kind of get knocked out from just like having an early loss in the season. You, you got to really be on top of it right from the start. Yeah. And the Ivy league is also what, uh, 
you know, as much as you look at the whole record for the season, it's just like when you talk about, yeah, winning the division and getting, uh, getting a championship ring or moving on to the, you know, the NCAA, uh, uh, tournament after, after the season, um, you know, the Ivy league, that's, that's what matters. And so every game that we go into, yeah, I just felt, uh, you know, the whole week it was, you know, the focus was all on that one game and we prepared for Ivy teams, um, you know, a lot more than we just compared to uh, any uh, non-conference teams. Um, but uh, I don't know. It was, it was always a good week. It was always fun because, you know, people are fighting for starting positions. They want to they wanna be in the game. So, the uh, you know, the intensity was good. Ron, from a coaching perspective, what is that like preparing non-conference and then flipping that switch and, and going right to, uh, to Ivy play? I mean, I imagine from a preparedness, you know, you, you and your coaching staff, you know, you have all week to figure it out, but, you know, going from the Big Ten where you're probably playing a lot more during the week to, like, one league game a week, that, that had to be a little bit uh, of an adjusting period for you. It's different for sure. And, and the, the intensity um, – and, and one of the big things with the Ivy League, the intensity of the games is unbelievable, but not having a conference tournament at the end um, is, is – is um it's it's a it's a hard part um uh, ab- about the competition because it I, I heard one announcer kind of describe it as almost like uh an an eight week you know single elimination tournament where you you feel like gosh if we drop three points then all of a sudden we we need we don't control our own destiny and and instead of just trying to say hey let's just let's just play as hard as we can today. There's going to be a result at the end. They want to win as well. Um, but it, it was, it's just an interesting part of our league. Now, I think probably everybody, um, if, you, if you polled all the players in the Ivy League, they probably, the majority, and we did it once, and 90% said they would love to have a tournament. I, I, think, I think it would make the second games even better um, if you had a four-team tournament or something like that because – now again, it all starts over, and 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 you have to prove yourself again to an opponent that maybe you had beaten, maybe you had tied, maybe you had lost to, um, and I think it, I think, I think it would make, um, and the Ivy teams have had a little success in the NCAA tournament the last couple of years. I, I think it would maybe lead to a couple teams getting into the NCAs um, from the Ivy League, and and there's there's reasons. I I think that um, if that happened, you would see Ivy teams. Um, maybe winning multiple games in the NCAA tournament because the, the, the level is high. Um, you know, the, the, one week, the, the one week of preparation is, is fascinating, and you don't want to peak too early in the week, but you, don't, you also want to have, like Bianca said, good, good hard practices so, so people feel that they're getting good reps in and, and getting game speed type reps. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've, we've done something where instead of every week for those um, seven Ivy games, um, we've also had maybe two weekends, two weeks where we have a midweek game. And they have been good and we've been able to, um, we've kind of gone to a philosophy of um, in, in some of those games, we want to play anybody who's healthy, anybody who's available and healthy. And so if that means playing 24 players, you know, doing that and, and sometimes as you go through a year, one of the best things that, that can become one of your best practices, playing, a, playing an opponent. And, and also for, for maybe people that haven't been um, playing maybe as much in some of the Ivy games to just give them a shot to get out on the field and play and, and do some things. And, and, and again, for the team to enjoy, like I said, everybody out there on the field and, and, and fight and, and cheer for everybody who's out there on the field. So... Um, I don't know if with the Ivy League, I don't know if you could do that seven times, have a seven time, seven midweek games because you just get exhausted because of what the um, Ivy games take out of you. But it's been something that I think has been um, helpful um, over the last couple of years. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask our players here, uh, your favorite uh, team to play. Was there ever a program or a team that you you really uh, got up for uh, that you really wanted to to, uh, to stick it to them? Is there a certain team program you guys enjoyed uh, more so than others? And it will be a corner kick. I feel like it was whoever was playing good. We stepped up, you know, uh, 
Harvard was good. I know at least for Britt and I are like early in our uh, career and then Princeton really started to take off. And so I feel like, uh, you know, we knew who was doing well in the division and uh, we always stepped up for those games. But I mean, just uh, Ivy League play in general, it's such a cool experience and a unique one. You only get to do it uh, a handful of times throughout the whole season. So um, yeah, I mean, every single game people, uh, people play their hearts out. Yeah, one of my favorite games or memories even was freshman year. Um, Harvard was the team to beat, and we were still competing for the title, and we were probably were playing Harvard probably our second to last game, I want to say. Um, and they had the chance to kind of clinch the championship, so they had brought the trophy to our field. So if we lost, they were going to award them the trophy on Burnham, and we really didn't want that to happen, and I remember – the feeling of that final whistle blowing and having us like put the ball in the back of the net kind of done did our job didn't let them score and it just felt so good to kind of not allow them to kind of clinch the clinch the ivies right there on our home field yeah for me i'd say uh i always like playing columbia a lot i think that they play a really respectable form of soccer and like whether just like regardless of all the um kind of I just forgot the word for like camaraderie the our uh, rivals so regardless of all of our rivals and things like that um I always enjoyed playing Columbia a lot is there a uh is there, was there a road trip or is there a certain Ivy road trip that you guys could do without I think we could do without uh, you know, Princeton. That was a far one. <laughs> Penn. Penn is the worst. Yeah, Penn and Princeton are far. Which is interesting. Usually usually Cornell gets the high I'm, rank. I'm a there. Cornell voter. I'm a, I vote Cornell. <laughs> it's kind of out there. you got to take some random ways to get there. And it's the last one of the season. So, you know, however it ends, you got to sit with that for, you know, the rest of the eight hours or whatever it takes to get back. <laughs> Ron, uh, what we have up here, Brett, is um is the second. I, I all right, Bianca Ribby. Yeah, great little ball by Lorna. That's a nice, nice cut. Right nice there. cut. Look at that cut. Ooh, <laughs> got fancy in the box. <laughs> what was the what was the uh, the plan of attack there, Bianca? From what you remember, driving in on for that shot. Yeah, I, I just remember, uh, you know, anytime you're in the 18 yard box as a forward, you know, your senses are kind of going off. You're like, I want to, you know, I want to get a shot off here. So, yeah, just bringing it into the box and seeing that player and uh, just trying to create uh, just that second window to get a shot off. Um, yeah, again, I was just beginning of the season wanting to make my mark. So, you know, I was hungry. You just put your head down and you make a play. Yeah, that was a big moment in that game, Ron, like you said. I mean, it was tight 1-0. Stony Brook kind of putting the pressure on there in that second half. But uh, like we talked about, the ebbs and flows and really a quick play like that, and uh, you're up 2-0. That was a big goal at that point in time. Yeah, and that and that, um, and that that move in the box where, where I, Bianca is not giving herself enough credit, I don't think. that That's a special move to cut a ball like that with a defender running at you because what you see sometimes is – is people just take a shot and it'll hit into somebody's legs or things like that. But I mean, to, to cut a player right there and to have that confidence that, that, um, that's a, that's a goal scorer's goal. So, and it was against the, the, the run of play a little bit. And so all of a sudden a, a one goal game becomes two and, and um, it allows you just to just to breathe just a little bit. Um, yeah, and I think I think on that play specifically, it's easy for a lot of people to generally like to take the touch wider because there's less players out there. But obviously, you have a narrow, you know, a smaller net to go go to. So it was a little, it was a good confidence by Bianca, kind of taking it to the middle of the field, giving yourself a better opportunity to tuck it into the corner. Is that my drop in pickup? <laughs> was it? <laughs> I think I think it was. Did it look I made like, like a, I've smothered it, but I think that I, I I don't know. I guess it could have still been on the ground. <laughs> I think yeah. that's you could get away. I got I mean clearly I got away with it, but we we totally paid it. we paid our uh, home refs to to let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> we're on we're on Burnham. They can't give us that call. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how it went. <laughs> I mean, they tell us to forget about all that. So I think I, I really well, do. <laughs> it might be because look at the ref. He's going over there, I think, yeah. to talk oh, to, the their, calm down, Brendan. To, to their coach a little bit. 
<laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's preseason, though. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's funny. No, Bianca, we were we were talking about your role. Uh, you know, as you grew into it as a senior, you know, you led the team uh, in assists in uh, 2017. So not only were you being able to put the uh, ball in the back of the net, but uh, you were also be able to find teammates there. Was that just, uh, you know, right place, right time? Or you, you were able to kind of develop that rapport as you got into that starting role and obviously leading the team in assists? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, it was just a huge confidence gain. Again, uh, you know, you start off the season right and you have a, a couple good games where you score some goals and uh, you gain that confidence to, you know, like have the ball at your feet to be comfortable with that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, just becoming, uh, you know, more of a leadership role, you uh, you start to think about the team first and less about uh, yourself and making those plays. And so I think just, uh, yeah, as I, as I gain the confidence and, uh, you know, obviously teams scout you. And so if they see me scoring goals, they put more pressure towards me. Well, now that's going to free up a teammate. So um, I do think it's a skill that I uh, tried to develop was just having that uh, – yeah, that awareness to find my teammates and uh, make things happen for them. Because at the end of the day, you know, we just want to see the ball get in the back of the net. It doesn't matter who's doing it. Yeah, you had 36 shots uh, on net uh, throughout the 2017 season. So, I mean, you you were firing on all cylinders as far as getting yeah. looks. <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted to – I didn't want to leave uh, anything uh, on the table for my college career. And, and Mary, you know, looking at your freshman season as a whole, I mean, you know uh, – Four shutouts uh, during that season, 60 saves uh, with a uh, 732 uh, save percentage. Uh, you know, did you find that you were finding that confidence as the season went along and as you, you know, especially in non-conference, because when you guys were, were really on par there in non-conference play, you guys seemed like you were, you were really on a roll there. But talk to us about, you know, how that confidence, which you absolutely need as a goalkeeper, and how that was built um, as the season went along. Yeah, I think I definitely started to find my role, especially with Bonnie there in the center back position. We and the whole back line, we kind of were in it together. I think we had a pretty good bond and kind of unspeakable communication of it. Um, but yeah, I definitely grew more comfortable going through the Ivy League games, just understanding um, what it takes and all of that. Yeah, Ron, can you speak to to Mariel's? development as a freshman like we said you know that that's a big you know some folks would view that that's pretty big uh, gamble there throwing a freshman right into the fire but you know what did you see from day one that said yeah she's going to be our goalkeeper and and she's going to do good things for us you know and and one I probably when I like the way Mario's personality and, and things like that I you know um, there's a quiet confidence. And, and my gut is as a coach, I probably walked over to her at practice one day. And as I was walking by, I just said, Hey, Mary, you ready to, you ready to start off in there just right at the start of games. And she probably said, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and, and that was, and that was it probably, you know? And so, and then we just kind of moved on from there. But, um, I think I, the, one of the things that, um, uh, and again, you, you, you would, if you watch through a whole season, Mariel's hands are very, very good. Like she, she catches balls and sticks them and where, where there's, there's no, um, there's no rebounds or, or, or things like that. And that's, you know, so, you know, going back to when she's younger, like obviously that was either ingrained in her or just naturally have it or, but that's, that's a, um, that's a, that's a great trait for a goalkeeper. You saw um, on that first opportunity with Sunnybrook in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so those, and those are things that, that also allow your defenders um, when they see that and know that to have confidence, because one of the toughest things for a defender is if they think their goalkeeper is going to give up a rebound or things like that, then you're constantly, you're a little bit on edge through a whole play. Like with Mario, I think um, right away, people had confidence in that regard. Um, and then I think that, um, I think that, um, I think it was something that, you know, ha having some success, being in a lot of close games, all those different things just allowed for that, um, allowed for that um, maturation process to, to happen um, pretty well through this first year. Can you guys speak to, as far as, you know, we talk about confidence, we talk about, you know, growing into your role, but, you know, for anybody that's watching or, or any future uh, Division One athlete, college athlete, can you guys just speak to the importance of, 
you know, the mental aspect, you know, being able to kind of put aside a bad play or put aside, you know, a tough game and, and kind of move on to the next. So it's, it's obviously a challenge, but, you know, uh, did that take you guys some time to kind of develop that and, and eventually, you know, uh, you know, mentally be, you know, we're on to the next one if you have a bad game or if you do have a good game, hey, we gotta, we're looking to the next one. Can you guys kind of speak to the, to the mental aspect of being a, a college athlete in that sense? Snuff that one out. Yeah, I know I always struggled, uh, especially freshman year. That was a big thing for me. And I, I still struggled with it going through the four years. But I, I think it, it comes with, obviously, your teammates, but obviously coaches that are willing to kind of support you if they feel like, you know, they want you out there and, like, they make that known that, you know, you got to keep your head in the game and one mistake isn't going to change that. Like, if they believe in you, you know, it makes you kind of trust yourself a little bit more. And I was lucky I, I, having uh, Ron, especially the freshman year, Ron and uh, Cord was great too. And they uh, they really helped kind of me feel comfortable out there and, like, know that, you know, maybe if one play didn't go my way, I couldn't just kind of, like, be timid and, like, scared and afraid to kind of touch the ball again. I wanted to get the ball. I should want to get the ball and I should want to, like, make up for it and get involved more. And so it really came from having really good coaches that were, you know, that really believed in you. Bianca, can you speak to, to that as just far as the mental aspect of being a, a college athlete and the, and the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of a season and how you're, you were able to, uh, to, to come with that and, and being able to grow into that role? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, different people are, uh, you know, they come into college just like different like head spaces. And so I think that, uh, you know, someone, we even use Mariel as an example, she comes in and she's like, she's a rock from the start. Um, nobody questioned her uh, capabilities as like a goalie. Um, and she, I mean, I wasn't, you know, a defender on her back line, but, uh, you know, she really commanded that line and led with such confidence. Um and then uh, and you can use somebody like me as an example on the flip side where, you know, it really took me, uh, you know, three years and then into the fourth year to really uh, kind of come into the, that, uh, you know, that role of having the, yeah, the, the confidence and like the sure, the sureness to, uh, you know, make a difference. But uh, I think that, you know, in order to be a good player, that's uh, that's a skill you need. And so some people have it right off the bat and some people have to develop it, but uh, you know, it's, uh, as soon as you get that, you're just you're you're invaluable to the team. You, your teammates trust you, and you make an impact on the field. There was the uh, first yellow card there. I think you referred to earlier there, Ron. It was actually I think we got a second one here coming up in in just yeah. a couple of minutes. There, that that was theirs, and then we we um. But but again, like like I hey, that's that's a part of our sport. Um, every so often, we'll we'll say to the team, we we should have about. 10 of these like by the end of the year you don't want to have 10 at the game but by the by the end of a year um you know just getting a good hard foul in or a, a good challenge and, and things like that and um um and and we 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 get a few here and 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 again that's a, this was a good you know the non-conference games you want to have good games where you have two teams fighting and working hard and and that was um i i felt that this game was um for sure uh, that way for us. Mariel, well, looking at your, your first game, you, you got the uh, shutout against FIU to, to start the season. I imagine that just had to be a huge confidence boost for you, your first NCAA game, and not only do you get a victory, but uh, you got a shutout. I imagine that, that had to feel good right off the bat, and that had to give you some confidence coming into this game. Yeah, I think for the team as a whole, especially just yeah, getting a good first win and um, for the defense and – yeah, it's a good, good confidence boost right at the beginning. Just get that first game under your belt, and it helps for the rest. So as we see here, Stony Brook uh, really starting to, to put the pressure on here. But, um, you know, one thing I remember about this game, Ron, uh, the ball control for you guys was, was really good, and there was never really any sense of panic. I mean, not spoil, you know, spoil alert, Stony Brook will put one up here shortly. But there never, never seemed to be that sense of panic in this game, and it was really – one of the best played games you had this season, and as far as I'm concerned, it, this this was a good game, and and I, I I even you know as you look through the as you look through the stats, you remember the score. I, I'm gonna be interested when it gets to that point. Like there's a good um, get an offer line, and Mariel does a good job. Um, looks like it was offsides, um, but just um, but just even if that wasn't offside, 
you know, just reading the play. And, and, and so it, it felt like at this point, it did feel like at this point in the game, you know, where we're saying, ah, you know, two and oh on the weekend, we're, we're in good shape. And, and that's, that's where, um, that's where one goal can, can change things quite a bit. But I felt like, I felt like there, there were good times there. There, there's our first and, and that's probably the right call. Um, but it, it was a good hard, um, little, little went in there and, and, and try to win a tackle and that's a good hard tackle and that's fine. Like you, you want to have kind of some of that aggression. Um, I, I think as a team, um, for sure, that's something that's, a, that's something that's, that's important. One thing I have noticed in this half a little bit is we talked about, um, that transition between Friday and Sunday. Um, and and there's probably some that would be interesting to hear um, these three talk about it. But there's probably getting to be some heavy legs there um, in the you know. So we're talking about this at the hundred seventieth minute of soccer in in three days, and it gets a little bit tougher, um, especially in the first weekend. It looks like a beautiful day. I don't know how hot it was that day, um, but going from a night game on Friday to um, to a day game on Sunday. Um, but yeah, speak to that, you, um, you three, as far as the, the, the mental and the physical part of that second game in three days. You go from where you're young and we used to be able to play three games in a day. Like you used to be, I don't know how we did it, but, uh, I just remember in college, like one game had me like laying and like, just like unable to move for hours after the game. So I know these, these, these games that were back to back in a sense, Friday, Sunday, they were, they were kind of tough. You had, you know, Saturday to really kind of, we did some like, you know, a little bit of um, different things. We did some pool workouts. We did some like light jogging. We did some things to really get like that lactic acid out. But uh, it was still tough getting back out there. The, the biggest thing though I noticed that you don't really necessarily always feel it until you stop moving. Like I know like when the adrenaline's going, I felt like we could kind of keep going and the heat was a different story for me. I don't know how you guys felt, but like on those days I really felt drained, but I, otherwise like the adrenaline kind of kept me going. I mean, I'm from Canada. So, you know, any game we played was hotter than I was used to <laughs> <laughs> right up until it was the last Ivy league game. And, uh, you know, we'd be driving up to Cornell and there'd be some snow and I'm just like, Oh, it feels just like home. <laughs> Any difference for you, Mariel, as far as playing those those two games in three days or the, those closer back-to-backs? Yeah, I think for me, surprisingly, I don't log as many miles as, as these guys. <laughs> um, but, yeah, for me, it's just kind of the, the mental regrouping and then, like, how can I support and motivate the team to kind of regroup as well. Um, but, yeah, I don't get the physical um, wear and tear as much as they do. But even just being aware of, you know, if it's a hot day or something and, uh, you know, being extra vocal so that uh, your, you know, your back line isn't expending any uh, extra energy that doesn't need to be uh, spent on those days. I think, uh, again, speaking just towards your, uh, yeah, your capabilities uh, as the last man back to, uh, yeah, to direct everybody and, uh, you know, keep your teammates at their best. So getting down to crunch time here as uh, Stony Brook with a, with a corner. Didn't see too many corners uh, in this uh, contest here. No, there were, it's, they had two, we had one, which that's, that's, that's sometimes also the Sunday game where just trying to get a little deeper on the field is tougher because maybe there's, you know, people don't want to make that five extra, get that five extra yards before they turn a ball across or things like that. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned the 2-0 lead before, but they always say, like, you can't be complacent. 2-0 is kind of the one of the toughest leads to have because you think about it, 3-0, you put the game away, but 2-0, you get complacent, you give them a chance to get back in it, and then it's anybody's game. And like Brett was saying, like, that kind of turns out to be the case. We give them a little bit of a chance to get back in it, unfortunately. It, it, and it is amazing because right now we're doing a pretty, pretty good job in this game. Like I, I don't see where Stony Brook's going to score on us. I, so I'm still not sure if they do score in this game um, because it, it, I mean, even though we've been saying all these things, people have been taking care of things. 
Um, we probably want to keep it just a little bit more like that, like in little plays like that. And maybe that helps, um, that helps salt the game away. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested where, where they get, um, where they get their chance. Yeah. And it never really felt like Stony Brook had, um, you know, easy opportunities. I mean, it really felt like that they had to work for every shot that they had in that game on. I don't know if you felt that way, but it, it really worked. You know, Stony Brook had to work for that one. Yeah, I agree. That might, that might have been, so that was offside. But, but again, it's coming up here. It's coming up here um, in a couple minutes. We definitely could have recognized a little bit, a little bit more. And I think the ball seems to be really centralized. I think we could have definitely spread it a little bit wider, kind of like Ron was saying with the possession. That would have been help, more helpful. Um, yeah. Nice, Brett. That, that was a good. Hard <laughs> hit. Was that you, Brett? Girl, out. <laughs> that was a good hard hit. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Again, that's I, that's that's one of the things that might be a little bit different for um for for players coming out of high school into college. I mean, that's a good, solid college tackle right there. That was awesome. I mean, it came off a throw-in, so they didn't even call it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That one might have got uh, Brendan a little bit uh, fired up on the sideline too. He had a few. He had a few of them on uh, during that game. <laughs> but when you look when you look back, you know what's the one thing that you guys take away um, from that 2017 season? Is there one you know is there one thing that you that you'll really remember about that team about that season that that will that will stick with you for forever, uh, uh, Brittany uh, Bianca, if you, as as the seniors. Well, what's the one thing that you'll take away from that your senior year? Well, I've got to say honestly, the dynamic the captains brought to it. It was just a really open, welcoming environment. We could kind of go to them for anything, and it felt like we were heard. It wasn't, you know, they weren't going to judge us for anything. They were going to address it, and they were going to, you know, make a change. And I think they really made it easier for everyone to feel connected. Um, I feel like the we were really working on like our team dynamic in a sense going into that season, and it really changed. Um, and I think they had a huge part to do with it, uh, Bianca and Gia. That is. Yeah, yeah. you had you had a part in that too, um, Britt. It's not it, it's not just the people with the title. You had a big part in it too. Um, yeah, no, I definitely oh, think it was, uh, it was it was it was a that, lot of the game. Um, I just, forgot just, that was that was the game, oh all that a goal. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't even close. <laughs> I totally forgot about that one. It was kind of like really anticlimactic. <laughs> so this right. game, we're calling the NCA. This game was this was Mariel's <laughs> second shutout. <laughs> <laughs> close to going in. This ref really didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen the replay on that, but uh, it definitely it, it it wasn't as clear cut as maybe the ref thought it was. The end line ref wasn't even like, or the sideline ref wasn't even close to the end line, so that's where I was. We need some goal line technology. Yeah, we're <laughs> the center ref had no place. <laughs> oh my gosh. Scared. Now I kind of remember that, and and that really was a that was really a, like you you think about like games and 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 things like that, and it's like man, that was so bad. Like you that's know, what you say, like, that's what you <laughs> what? say about soccer, though. Like the soccer yep. is such a crazy sport where you can be dominating, and something like that can put them back in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's that that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, now. Now that definitely that brings back a you know. Because uh, I remember calling the game and I'm thinking, boy, that uh, that did not look like that one in the back of the net there. So, <laughs> not at all. That's awesome. <laughs> but you look at you know the, the the final you know 15 minutes of this game, Ron. Though, like you said, take take that out of it. Um, and of course, there's a there's a foul right there. I think we might get a. Yellow card there, we do. And that was fine. That was on Remy Barinsky, I believe it was. Yep, yep. Um, but, you know, you take that goal out. I mean, again, you know, a, a game in which it felt like Dartmouth was in control and was imposing your style of play on Stony Brook. 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 it, like it'll be interesting now to see if they had any other chances, but um, but but yeah, that that is it's kind of funny just seeing that because it's just little things that you forget, and then when you see them again, you remember. But it it is interesting. Um, I I I going back to that taking away from the season. I I agree with Britt. I think what I'll remember is like our our team. It there was some there were some things where we had to define who we were and, and who, what our character was and, and how we perceived each other in the locker room, how others perceived us and, and some different things, which, which um, again, it, it is a sport, it is a game, but it, it, there's so much more going on. And I think this season um, was something that everybody was was proud of of who we were um as we went through the three months and and um and and a lot of that was senior leadership a lot of that was was people coming in and accepting roles a lot of that was how hard people worked all those different things but I'll, I'll remember that um i think i in my mind this is one of the most important teams and um over the 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 seven years that i've been here or six six seasons in this season that i've been here really diversified roles i guess like in a sense like there wasn't just like it wasn't just black and white there was a ton of different roles to be had whether it was someone that was injured that was going to be you know very vocal on the sideline or pumping people up from over there there was a ton of different roles and we were willing to kind of draw attention to those and that really helped us moving forwards yeah i think this was a huge growing season for us and uh, you know obviously Britt and i don't uh don't really know what happened uh, after the season uh, just from like, uh, you know, within the team standpoints, we saw the results and everything, but uh, we, you know, we had a big culture change um, within a, you know, a short period of time. And so I think again, yeah, having tight games where, you know, you know, things just don't go our way and, uh, you know, we have a lot of ties, a lot of overtimes, a lot of heartbreakers, but uh, yeah, not letting that get us down, not, uh, reverting back to old ways just because that's easier but uh, you know doing what was difficult and growing as a team um, you know I mean my hope was that uh, you know you guys carried that momentum into future seasons and really just made it a more uh, you know a, a better environment and a funner program to be a part of because uh, I mean my uh, my senior year that was my favorite year I think we had the best team dynamics of the whole time that I was there and uh, you know I'll just I'll just remember how much fun it was it was it was it was unlike any other season that we had. And Mario, what what will you take away from that 2017 season, and how do you think that's developed you to where you are now? Yeah, going off of Bianca there, I think we saw a lot of adversity this season, um, and so I was able to take all of those learning experiences and put them into into future seasons. And then, yeah, I also remember it as being such a warm and fun welcome to to DWS. I I think. I could speak on behalf of our my whole class of that it was just such a great year, um, a good group of girls, and um, yeah, we're really lucky to have the group that we had, and um, yeah, I miss it a lot. I think it took a lot of commitment out of like the upperclassmen, and um, just to like really make changes that maybe we weren't going to see all the results from, because I think they still had a lot of growing, and they still you know grew a lot. So it yeah, it did take a lot of commitment from us to just make changes that maybe we were gonna we weren't gonna have a winning season, but we were gonna change the culture so that the future programs were only gonna get stronger. And there it is, the uh, final whistle in the Dartmouth Big Green coming away with a two one win against Stony Brook in uh, two thousand seventeen, the second game of the non conference slate and uh uh, the Big Green would uh, start off uh, two and zero, and a uh, convincing win over uh, the Sea Wolves uh, at Burnham Field. So uh, certainly a, a good game and a lot of fun uh, uh, recollecting with everybody here. And I guess I'll just uh, you know ask each of you you know before we take off you know what you know what what Dartmouth has meant to you and and you know and what you hope to kind of move into the future with that you can take from Dartmouth. And uh, Bianca, we can start with you. Yeah, what a question. I think that, uh, you know, Dartmouth, uh, you know, it's made me the, the person and the athlete that I am today. I learned a lot of really good, really hard lessons um, throughout my time. You know, persevering, leadership, um, you know, uh, the whole team dynamics, working as a team player. I think that, yeah, moving forward, that's something that, uh, I mean, it's it's made me a better bobsledder. I think that, uh, you know, 
God willing, I go to the Olympics. I think it's definitely those are the skills that I learned at Dartmouth that I learned through my teammates. Um, I learned through amazing coaches. I, uh, you know, I miss Dartmouth like crazy. I think there's no other experience like it. And uh, I'm just very thankful that uh, it was such a positive experience and a positive environment that, yeah, I can hop on a call three years later and, you know, whether that's Britt, who was probably one of my best friends at school, um, or it's Mariel, who I had a very short time with, or, yeah, Ron, who's the coach, and uh, to just feel so uh, welcomed and excited to see you guys again. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I have nothing but positive feelings, and uh, I really I really do miss you guys. Yeah, going off of that, uh, <laughs> I think a lot of it, too, is you had such great connections with people. You spent so much time, whether it was on – these trips in preseason coming in a month early, you got, you know, your closest friends and yeah, I'm over in uh, Connecticut. Bianca's in like <laughs> up in Canada. We've got other friends out in California, like down to all over different places. Like we're all spread out. And the thing is, I feel like the bonds we built with going through all the stuff we went through together, you know, I could pick up the phone and I could, or I can visit them and I, it would just be the same thing we left off. It would be such an easy transition to get back to where we were. And I love that bond. And I obviously just love that competitive, like, nature that Dartmouth, you know, really had both, you know, as in academics and athletics. And I think that that really kind of continues to push me as I'm trying to apply to schools now. Yeah, I think going off of all of that, I agree with you guys. I still have about a little less than a year left, so I'm fortunate and trying to soak it all in. It, Enjoy it's it. Weird, I know, <laughs> weird to think that it's – somewhat coming to an end but yeah I think Dartmouth's been one of the best decisions I've made and um, loved every aspect of of the school and uh, what sport has given me as well so yeah just trying to enjoy it all while I, what I have left. And Ron uh, just from your perspective what does that 2017 team mean to you and what it's meant to the program here in 2020? I, again, like um, just um, echoing like I, I think that they were they were the um, they were the impetus of, of, of change. Um, and so um, I think that I, and, and again, when we talk about our team culture, we're not perfect and, and nobody's ever said we are, but I think that was the year that we said, this is who we want to be. Now let's try to do things that, that get us there. And if we take a step back, figure out a way to then just take two steps forward. Um, and again, on this, on this, you got three superstars. So it's, it's awesome seeing, seeing these three here and, and, and talking about uh, their experience. So th this is fun for sure. Well, it's been fun for, uh, for a lot of big green soccer fans to uh, go down memory lane. And like you said, Ron, seeing uh, two big time players and one uh, big time veteran here in uh, Mariel Gordon, Bianca Ribby, and of course, uh, Brittany Champagne. Thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Big Green uh, Sports Classics. Ron, great to see you, and uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for thanks having us, Brett. Yeah, thanks for having us. Nice seeing you guys. And just want to say... And just want to say thank you to our friends at Ledger National Bank, the official banking partner of Dartmouth Athletics, for bringing us today's classic game. Remember, you can visit LedyourBank.com or visit a branch to check out Ledger's Dartmouth Athletics branded debit cards. Ledger National Bank, plan well, live well, play well. And we thank you for uh, joining us here on Big Green Sports Classic. Till next time, I'm Brett Franklin saying so long and go Big Green. <laughs>